Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Season 26 video on the best builds. In this video, we're going to take a look at the top 10 best builds that you can play in Season 26 for Solo Greater Rift pushing. And we're going to group about 50 of the top builds in the game into a tier list of their relative power. This video is brought to you in collaboration with the Diablo 3 experts over at maxroll.gg, where a think tank of some of the top Diablo 3 players, who you'll be seeing topping the leaderboards, combine their brain power, their play experience, and the power of math to determine what are the best builds of Season 26. So as we dive into the tier list, we're going to put up Season 25's tier list as a point of comparison. As a refresher, our tiers here are measured in terms of relative power compared to S tier. S tier builds are the best builds in the game. S tier builds are the ones expected to be topping the leaderboards by the end of the season. And again here, the key is relative power. So if, for instance, your personal best is a GR100 with a B tier, then that means on an S tier build, you should be able to clear a 110. Now, moving from season 25 to 26 and the tier list, it's important to understand that season 25 had these special items called soul shards that gave tremendous buffs and increased the power of every build tremendously. But some builds a lot more than others. Now, season 26 only includes a couple balance changes, so most of the movement that we're going to see of builds dropping or rising a tier is based on the loss of soul shards. Basically, builds that benefit it above average from soul shards are probably going to be dropping a tier. Builds that benefit it below average from soul shards are going to rise and the average are going to stay where they were. As a reminder, a red arrow means a build has dropped a tier. A green arrow means a build rose a tier. A star indicates a build that is new to season 26. And the little sack indicates that the build uses a set that is part of the season's hatred gift. This is something that you can do through your season journey early on to acquire a starter set. You open your season journey in game, you follow a set of instructions, and you will be rewarded with a set. So without further ado, let's dive into the season 26 tier list, starting with the F tier. F as in fully able to complete the season, but you really gotta love the play style to go for these. It's a bit wordy, maybe. For the Necromancer, Bloodlance is neither the best Corpse Lance build, nor is it even the best Tragool build, so there's really no reason to pick this build. And as for the Arakir Chicken build, there are much, much better Arakir builds, but this one does let you turn into a chicken and run around pooping eggs, so... Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. And that takes us into the D tier. D as in... Do any of you even play these builds? Seriously, if you do, sound off in the comments and say why. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. D tier builds are up to 20 GRs behind S tier builds. And in this tier, we have the best Tragool build, the Corpse Explosion version. If you want to top the Tragool leaderboards, this is the build to do it with. We have the Pestilence Corpse Lance build for Necromancer. This is the best Pestilence build to top the Pestilence leaderboards, and Pestilence is the starter set for Necro this season. We also have in this tier the Legacy of Dreams Rat Mage Necromancer build, which has been one of the best group XP farming builds for years now? Years, I think it's fair to say. But for Greater Rift pushing, let's just say this is not a build for Greater Rift pushing. There are far better Necro builds, far better Legacy of Dreams Necro builds as well for pushing. We also see in this tier the Natalia Fan of Knives build for Demon Hunter, which is not the best Natalia build, despite it being the most difficult to run. And we also see the Legacy of Dreams Meteor Wizard build. This is not the best Legacy of Dreams build for Wizard, but it is the best Meteor build if you're looking to play a Meteor Wizard. And that takes us into C tier. C as in can do better, can do worse. C tier builds are 15 GRs behind S tier. The Demon Hunter's Unhallowed Essence tops out at C tier with both variants. We have Multi Shot and Hungering Arrow. They play quite differently, but they both top out in C tier. We have two Demon Hunter builds that mix Natalia's six piece with four pieces of other sets. One uses four pieces of Marauder, the other uses four pieces of Gears of the Dreadlands. And both are just weaker than pure Natalia, pure Marauder, and pure Gears of the Dreadlands. The Raiment Generator build for Monk will top the Raiment of a Thousand Storms leaderboards. And the Wizard's Talrasha Frozen Orb build rises from the D tier 
into the C tier because it didn't really benefit from soul shards all that much. This build will top the Talrasha leaderboards, but it is not the strongest frozen orb wizard build. For the Barbarian, the Immortal King Charge build is a C tier build. This includes pieces of the Raycor set, but with the Raycor rework that we saw this season, there is a much more powerful pure Raycor build. And there's also a much better IK build available for barbs, so this build is unlikely to see much use. For the Witch Doctor, the Helltooth Gargantuan build is in the C tier, but this build is superseded by another Helltooth build. Then the Crusader's Akan Condemn build has dropped down to C tier from B tier due to the loss of its powerful Soul Shard. And while Akan is the starter set for Crusader for Season 26, there is a more powerful Akan build you can go for. The Necromancer's LOD Death Nova build similarly drops down into the C tier. If you want to run a Nova build, this is your best option, but there are much better LOD builds for Necromancer. And that takes us into the B tier. B tier builds are up to 10 Great Rifts behind the S tier. B as in brunt of the builds live here. For Barbarian, the Immortal King Hammer of the Ancients build is the best IK build, but not the best Hammer of the Ancients build. The Savage Frenzy build also tops out in B tier, as do both variants of the Might of the Earth set, Leapquake and Seismic Slam. For the Crusader, the Seeker of the Light Blessed Hammer build, aka the Hammered In, tops out at B tier, as does the Legacy of Dreams Blessed Shield build, aka the Captain America build. The Roland Sweep build drops down to B tier after losing Soul Shards, and this is where Rolands will top out. For the Demon Hunter, the G.O.D., the God Demon Hunter, the Gears of the Dreadland set, this tops out in B tier for GR pushing, but it is an excellent speed build. The Natalia Rapid Fire build is the build to run to top the Natalia leaderboards. There's also a Legacy of Dreams Rapid Fire build that's going to top the non-set leaderboard for Demon Hunter. It has a similar playstyle to Natalia Rapid Fire, but the Natalia version deals more damage and the LD version is tankier. The Shadow Impale build also tops out in B tier after its buff last season. For the Monk, the Exploding Palm build will be the go-to for Uliana. That's going to top the Uliana leaderboards. And if you really want to be Chuck Norris and harness the power of the Roundhouse Kick, you can run the Sunwuko Lashing Tail Kick build though this is not the best Sun Wuko build. For Necromancer, B tier is the best that the Masquerade set can do, as well as Anarius with both of its variants, Corpse Explosion and Poison Sight. However, there's a more powerful Corpse Explosion build and there's a more powerful Poison Sight build, so Anarius isn't really an inviting choice. For the Witch Doctor, the Zombie Bears build will top the Helltooth leaderboard. The Jade Harvester build tops out in B tier. And as for Arakir Firebats and LOD Spear Barrage, well, there is a better Arakir build, so unless you're really committed to the Firebats playstyle, which I personally hate, there's really not a strong reason to pick this build, and there is also a stronger Spirit Barrage build. For the Wizard, the starter set is Dalzir's Magnum Opus, and it tops out in B tier with two variants, Twister and Frozen Orb. However, there is a stronger Twister build out there and a stronger Frozen Orb build out there, but since this is the starter set, you can start with this and then segue into those builds. You'll already be getting some of the supporting gear. The Typhon Hydra build also tops out at B tier. The wizard has many more options available to it in higher tiers, including a more powerful Hydra build. And that takes us into the A tier. A as in... Apt. These are only 5 GRs behind S tier builds. And this is where Barbarians top out this season, but we'll talk more about Barbarians in a minute. For the Crusader, we saw a nerf to the two-piece Norvald set this season, which is affecting a couple builds. The Akan Bombardment build, which also benefited tremendously from Soul Shards, craters down from being the number two build on our top 10 list from last season, to dropping all the way to simply A tier and out of the top 10 because of this double whammy. However, Akans is the starter set for Crusader this season, and this is the best Akan build you can run, and this build will be topping the Akan leaderboards. Especially compared to some of the other classes, this is a pretty good starter set. The other Crusader build in A tier that was affected by the Norvald nerf is the Invoker Thorns build. However, the Invoker set was buffed in order to make up for that nerf. The buff transforms it from a single target build into a build that can deal a bit of area damage. And we have a video guide on the updated Invoker right here. For Demon Hunters, we actually have no A tier build builds at all. The gulf in power for Greater Rift pushing for the best Demon Hunter build or builds, we'll keep it a surprise, and the next best is huge. The Demon Hunter is a really powerful class, arguably the best at speedrunning, but it is quite limited when it comes to excellent GR pushing builds. For the Monk, A tier is where three flavors of Tempest Rush live. 
Sun Wuko, Patterns of Justice, and Legacy of Dreams. All three of these are extremely close in power, but technically the Sun Wuko variant deals the most damage and is thus the strongest. However, it is also the squishiest. Then rising from B tier because it barely benefited from soul shards, we have the Sun Wuko Wave of Light build, which is the weakest of the A tier monk builds, and it's also not the strongest Sun Wuko build, and it's also not the strongest Wave of Light build. So if you're looking to top the Sun Wuko leaderboards, Tempest Rush is your bet. For the Necromancer, the Rathma set tops out an A tier, and the Legacy of Dreams Poison Scythe build is very strong, but not the strongest, Elodie build for Necro. For the Witch Doctor, the Mundu Nugu set tops out at A tier, and the Legacy of Nightmares Poison Dart build will top the non-set leaderboards for Witch Doctor. But there is a stronger Poison Dart build available. For the Wizard, we have a lot of A tier builds. Firebirds tops out an A tier with two variants, Flame Blades and Explosive Blast. Veer's set tops out an A tier with two variants, the Chantoto variant, the more classic Archon, and the much more challenging Reverse Archon variant, which rises to A tier since it didn't benefit as much from Soul Shards. We also have two Legacy of Dreams builds, the Hydra variant, which is the strongest Hydra build you can run, and the Frozen Orb variant, which is the best Frozen Orb build you can run. But neither of these will top the no set leaderboard for Wizard. Now, as for Barbarian, well, this is the only class that actually tops out at A tier. Every other class makes it into S tier this season, but Barbarian. In this tier, we have the classic Spin to Win Whirlwind Barbarian build, which will remain the best Bounty build, the best Speed T16 farming build, and it's still a robust option for Greater Rift pushing, but its playstyle really struggles in the higher Greater Rift levels. And that takes us into our top 10 builds for Season 26, which will be starting off in the A tier. Coming in at number 10, we have the new Raycor Barbarian build. Raycor got a complete rework in Season 26, and it's the starter set for Barbarians. With the rework, Raycor becomes a charging throw barb. It launches spears that erupt into these shotgun boulder blasts. It's a really fun build, and it'll be the best build for speedrunning Greater Rifts for Barbarians. Its weakness, however, is its low survivability and kind of clunky playstyle. But we have a video on running Raycors right here. Then coming in at number 9, we have the final Barbarian build on on this list. The Legacy of Dreams Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian. Now, Whirlwind, Raycor, and LOD Hoda are all roughly equally powerful. None of these eclipse the others, but LOD Hoda is by far the easiest of these to run in GR pushing. Playstyle is simple, it's super tanky, so it'll be the favored build for Barbarians to run in GR pushing. That takes us to number 8, the final A tier build the Legacy of Nightmares Bombardment Crusader build. This build remains in A tier from last season and is now actually a better option than the Akan Bombardment build, though it is more difficult to gear for being based on Legacy of Nightmares. But this build will top the no set leaderboards for Crusader. So in theory, if you go Crusader, you can start off with Akan Bombardment, since Akan is a starter set. You can place on the Akan leaderboards, and then you can transition into the Legacy of Nightmares Bombardment build and place on the No Set leaderboards. And that takes us into the S tier. S as in seriously sexy builds. We have eight builds in S tier, which is an improvement over last season, with representation from every class but Barbarian. These are the best builds for GR pushing in Season 26. So on to number seven, the top Witch Doctor build on our list, the Arakir Spiders build. This build offers a unique playstyle, lots of damage, and it's easy to put together. We'll also mention now, however, because you might have noticed that we are at our top seven, but we have eight builds left, that we also have an S tier, the Zunimasa Poison Dart build. Technically, the Zunimasa Poison Dart build is the strongest Witch Doctor build for Greater Rift pushing. And while it may seem inviting to go for this build because Zunis is the starter set for Witch Doctor this season, this build is so squishy that it is considered almost unplayable at lower Paragon early in a season. It also requires a lot of experience as a player. And because of that, we're leaving it in S tier, but we're actually not including it in the top 10. Pound for pound, most people will do significantly better with Arakir than with the Zunimasa build, even though Zunis is on paper capable of pushing further. So coming in at number six, we now have the best Demon Hunter build in the game, the Marauder Sentry build. This build's Greater Rift pushing power eclipses all other Demon Hunter builds, but it can't quite keep up with other Demon Hunter builds for speed running. And this is because the build has lower mobility due to it needing to deploy turrets constantly. So whenever you change level, you got to get your turrets out before you're dealing your max damage again. Still, this build is also likely to be the best 
or if not the best, then one of the best builds for Echoing Nightmares. Definitely the best Demon Hunter build, but quite likely as well the best build in the game for Echoing Nightmares. Echoing Nightmares is the new endgame activity added in Season 26. Last we tested on PTR, Marauder was by far the best build for Echoing Nightmares, but since then we are getting balanced changes to Echoing Nightmares. We're not quite sure what to expect, so we'll have to see on Season Launch Day. That takes us on to number 5. Dropping down from the number 1 spot from last season, we have the now nerfed in a monk build. The in a monk was truly overpowered. A nerf was warranted. And this nerf affected only the fire version of Inna. So the cold speedrunning version is untouched. It's just as good as it always was. And this has allowed the rise of a new variant, a physical variant, to emerge for GR pushing. This is a great Rift Guardian killer. Don't let anyone tell you that Inna monks are dead after the nerf. They are alive and well and remain an excellent choice for both GR pushing and speed content for pretty much all content in the game. There are two builds I'm looking to run in Season 26. One is Marauder, one is Inna. Coming in at number 4, we have the Aegis of Valor Heaven's Fury Crusader. This is the best Crusader build for the season. And this build was actually affected by the nerf to the Norvald set. However, it was not impacted as much from the loss of Soul Shards as the Akan Bombardment build, which overshadowed the Heaven's Fury build in Season 25. The Heaven's Fury Valor Seder is easy to play, but it's slow. It's suboptimal for anything other than GR pushing. There is a Fist of the Heavens Valor Seder that is good for speedrunning if you want to go for it. On to number three, the Legacy of Dreams Twister Wizard. This is the best wizard build for pushing GRs in Season 26, rising from A tier because it barely benefited from Soul Shards. Now, while this build is very tanky, it is not beginner friendly at all. It has exceptionally complicated mechanics. These mechanics require more skill and understanding than possibly any build on this list, more so than the average build. So if you're looking for a build that will actually reward you for learning, getting better, mastering, then Twister is an excellent choice for a non-brainless build. Then coming in at number two, we have the Necromancer's Legacy of Dreams Corpse Explosion build. This is the best Necro build in Season 26 for GR pushing. It's tanky. It does insane burst damage, it lacks mobility, and it has a heavy dependence on cooldown rotation as well, so it's really not suited for anything other than GR pushing, however. And lastly, coming in at number one, the best build in the game for solo GR pushing in Season 26, we have the Monk's Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light build. While it is difficult to fully gear this build, it's powerful for both speed content and for pushing. And after the nerfs to Inna and the Crusader nerfs, this build, which came in fifth place last season, has risen to the top untouched by any nerfs. Now as a reminder folks, I have build videos for a lot of these builds and there are written guides on maxroll.gg for all of these builds. So do be sure to visit that as a reference because that's going to wrap up this video. But I end with a question, what build are you going to run in Season 26? Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.